Hello, David Zritsky for The Bond Experience. Welcome back. All right, we have a plethora of Barton Pereira sunglasses to get to today. We're going to review, we're going to discuss, but we've got to roll it back just for a moment because many of you, I believe, are familiar with Barton Pereira and you might not even know it. You see, they've supplied a lot of sunglasses for No Time to Die. You can see just some of them here and we've done reviews on all of them. They've had these releases, uh, really cool type of connection to the Bond history from an accessory and sartorial standpoint and a very nice brand to the Bond fans. They were good enough to send me, for example, literally every version of their new line. And I think this is their third. Look at that German three. What? That is crazy. You're so, you're so multilingual. Uh, third version of their sunglass line. And, and we want to talk about it because it's an interesting one. I don't think it's very cut and dry, but all right. So the company itself, Bill Barton and Patty Pereira started this company in 2007. The whole idea was to start a sunglass company that was uncompromising in both style and quality and customer service. All of the sunglasses are made through a very rigorous multi-week process in Japan. And what results are very high quality, high acuity, um, ocular clarity. Look at, look at all the terms. It's like, I, I, it's almost like I know what I'm talking about. He doesn't. But this is what they come out with on the other side. So when I heard that they were releasing a third line, I got very excited. And then, then I heard further that it was going to be focused on two films, Thunderbolt and also this puppy right here, A View to a Kill, which is, you know, I know, you know, you either love it or you, you know, maybe not so love it. We don't hate any Bond movies, but it's not, it's not what people would call the pick of the litter, typically speaking. But for the people that love A View to a Kill, they love it. Now, there are aspects of A View to a Kill that I really like. So when I heard about this, I got super excited because immediately I'm thinking sunglasses, A View to a Kill, boom! Oh my gosh, they are going to be releasing this, Bond's gadget sunglasses that he peers through the windows with. And I'm like, oh my gosh, it's, it's so 1980s, but I can't wait to own a pair. No, no. And that's fine. I mean, but they decided to focus on Zorin. So let's start with A View to a Kill first, since we've already started talking about it. Now, they have a lot of different versions from A View to a Kill from the sunglasses. Now, these are, they're never going to be exact replicas, of course. This is their own kind of homage to it. But let me kind of go over them and then we can kind of see the details of these specifically as we go over them. Celebrating the forthcoming 60th anniversary of the James Bond film series, this limited edition design is a reimagining of the aviator silhouette worn by Max Zorn in A View to a Kill. The 007 Avtac gold bottle green sunglasses by Barton Pereira have a titanium frame surrounding a lens with invisible Zorn detailing that only reveals itself when breathed on. So here are the details, handmade in Japan. The design has a fine titanium metal frame with a uniquely modified angled aviator silhouette. A combination of smooth and textured detailing creates a multi-layered effect across the bridges and temple. This CR39 lens with an anti-reflection coating features a breath logo hmm, that reveals the Zorin Z while temple tips, say that nine times, features the 1962 era 007 logo mark. The sunglasses are presented in a limited edition Barton Pereira 007 Legacy Collection case with cleaning cloth. Barton Pereira believes that every pair of sunglasses should fit as perfectly as a well tailored piece of clothing, and these limited edition frames are handmade in Japan by highly skilled craftsmen focused on perfecting every detail. The dimensions are the lens is 61 millimeters, bridge is 15 millimeters, temple length is 145 millimeter, and the cost is 445 pounds or $609. Okay, so now we've got to dive into this really specifically because I, I've just said a mouthful. I, I really have, but let's explore these. First of all, um, I read out that the green bottle lens, that's one color. We're going to go over the different colors, but I'm going to take this first one. This is a gold Sil gold and silver, but mostly gold. 
um, and the lens is a smoky topaz. And the reason I'm doing that, if you take a look at this picture of Zorin, uh, and by the way, conjures all types of bad Christopher Walken type quotes like, I'm most comfortable when I'm in the saddle. That was the, the worst Christopher Walken ever. More power. I need more power. I need more cowbell. But <laughs> so the reason I want to take these is these, I think, are the most accurate to the movie. If I really look at the pictures and compare the two, yeah, yeah, um, these are very comparable to the movie. Now, I'm putting these on. You're going to see that lovely ring light, but we'll try to turn them a little bit and we'll get up close and personal so you could see some of the details and the crags in my face. But this, uh, the eye is 61 millimeters. Uh, Temple is 145. And the reason I bring that up is these are big. I don't know if you could tell. These, these are very 1980s. And if this is going to be an homage piece back to the 1980s, you don't want the small, tight, kind of aviators that you've seen on some things. You want these larger things. You want the, the larger diameter that you're seeing right now. I'll kind of turn to the side here. Sorry that you're getting this like, like zombie uh, ring light eyes, but trust me, it's lighting it up really nicely. Let's, let's see the arms themselves. And by the way, there you can see, we'll get up close and personal. You could see the 007 vintage logo. That's very cool, actually, that they did that. And it's subtle. It blends in very nicely with that. So I read to you something very interesting. I didn't know this until I got this and started reading up on these. But this has an added extra effect. I'll call it that. Almost like a cube branch effect. That when you breathe on the lens, when you breathe on the lens, you're supposed to see a Zorn symbol. It is so subtle. It's up in that corner there. Yeah, it's there, but it is the most subtle thing. We'll see if we can get really up and close and personal with that, but it is, it's very, it's very, I, I know what you're saying. We've got to talk about the elephant in the room. And while we're doing that, I'll take the next color. Um, this is a, the lens is smolder, ooh, but it's got a black trim on it, okay? So this, this, this to me doesn't look like the movie, but if you like a black trim and a more smoky type of lens, then this gives you choices. And I think this is why Barton Pereira did all these colorways, um, these color schemes, is so people could gravitate to one color or another. But we've often talked about branding and we don't like things for the most part that are overtly branded. A nice little tag turned around on the back, not so bad. But something that goes James Bond or 007 uh, may be a little bit too much. This, the 007 logo on the side, it's relatively, relatively subtle. But this breath thing got me really concerned because I'm thinking like, am I going to be walking down the street and all of a sudden a Zorin logo ensues? And I'm, I was a wee bit concerned. Don't be concerned. I'm having, unless you really look for it, I don't even think I could pick it up with the naked eye uh, on camera. So it's very, very subtle. It's almost like that I know, but other people might not. This is the noir. This is the black satin ones. Okay, so these are like all black, if you like all blacked out. And again, these are relatively big. I will say this, because these this is about being authentic and honest. These are a wee bit big for me. Um, you know, they're very fashion forward. They're very stylized. You know, the larger aviators nowadays uh, are, are just that. They're supposed to be large and oversized. So this, if you're going for that, definitely this is the thing for you. And if you're looking for a little bit of a throwback and an homage and you want to give a nod to uh, a view to a kill, well, this is perfect. These are the silver. I do like these. These are nice. In a steel blue lens. Oh, yeah. These might be my favorite. I know it's not very a view to a kill because you, you should have the gold, but these are more me. These are a little bit more me. Now, it's, again, it's large and in charge. I'm looking at my 
camera like it's a mirror. So if you see me ooging and ogling, there you go. So there, there you have it. Super light, super well constructed. You could, you can tell the uh, the ocular acuity, as I like to call it, is extremely high. But that speaks to the quality of the sunglasses. Now, you also get with each pair of sunglasses that you purchase this case. It's very cool, very different than the ones you've seen from No Time to Die. This is almost like a, it's kind of a half clamshell. You can see this, but it's got the older 007 60th anniversary logo on there. That's where the sunglasses go. It says 007 Legacy Collection inside. That's very cool. But here is your Barton Pereira cleaning cloth. It's got some stuff on the back. Oh, I'm thinking I'm going to like this. Hufa. Yes. Barton Pereira 007. Again, they're using that wonderful vintage throwback to the 60s 007 logo on there. And I, I like that. I think that's, I'm ready to celebrate the other 24 movies. Not that I have anything against No Time to Die. Fine movie. Well made. Well made. No argument there, but I'm ready to celebrate some other ones like Thunderball. Now th this is pretty cool. So the most accurate one, and, and we know that there is a Thunderball sunglasses out there that is dead on accurate because it's the correct brand. But this is um, a nice homage piece. And we're going to read you some details about this one first. Hold on. So Celebrating the forthcoming 60th anniversary of the James Bond film series, this limited edition design pays homage to Bond in Thunderball 1965. The 007 Thunderball sunglasses, for example, the black nocturnal polarized edition by Barton Pereira, have polished xylenite frames, blah, blah, polarized lenses with invisible detailing that only reveals itself when you breathe on them. The details, the handmade frame is built in Japan from xylenite, Acetate containing metal core wiring to provide a skeletal foundation with supreme comfort and a flexible fit. The signature lightweight feel of the sunglasses is due to the resin-based polymer plastic used, and xylenite is tumbled for several days before being hand-polished twice to create a seamless, smooth surface. This material selection and uncompromising process results in a light, durable product with a deep gloss finish. Polarized lenses are finished with anti-reflection coating and feature a secret breath detail of the 1962 era 007 logo. The temple tips feature the 1962 007 logo. The sunglasses are presented in a limited edition Barton Purr 007 log legacy collection case with cleaning cloth. The lens is a 51 millimeter, bridge is 21 millimeter, and the temple length is 148. It's 385 pounds or 527 Dollars. Now, these are the ones I chose right away, the Nocturnal Polarized, the black trim, because I think they're the most accurate. Now, um, I have a feeling these are going to be more my cup of tea than the Aviator ones, just because, yeah, it's the right size for me. Uh, it's the right size for me, that is. <laughs> quote, that was a quote from Russia with Love. Um, but look at these. These are quite nice. They fit really well. I like them. They're sleek, but they're, dare I say, traditional, heritage, vintage enough. And they do have that 007 vintage logo on there. You can see right there. But it's, it's relatively subtle. And it's, I just want to show you something. It's hidden behind my ear. You actually do not see this at all. And it's not on the other side. So it's only on one side. What I do like about this is on the inside, you can see that it does say Thunderball right there. I like that as a little bit of a, a collector's homage. I do. I do. Now, the special effect. Oh. You can see it quite well. Again, I'm going to have to I'll have to pick that up in post if you will, but there's a, sure enough, there's a 007 logo. It's, it's almost like hazed on, you know, almost like it's uh, lasered on in a very subtle way. And now these are all fogged up. Well done, David. Well done. So let's check out the other colors. So these are great. This is the chestnut with a sequoia polarized Oh, a lot of you are going to like this. This is like, I guess, what you would deem tortoise shell. So you see here, I'll kind of move it around a little bit. 
I like these a lot. These are very, they're, they're not a direct pull from Thunderball, but from a style standpoint, these would probably be the ones I gravitate to the most. Um, again, not being a total uh, direct lineage to Thunderball, but a nice homage. These are interesting. So this is a dusk. It's a marine polarized lens. So you'll see a blue, but this is like a dusk. It almost looks like a gray, grayish green. I don't know if the light is going to pick it up. I'll try to get it in the light and we'll get up nice and close. And again, you know, these, these little logo things are pretty subtle here. So I'll move back a little bit so you can see this. Quite nice, quite nice. And again, it gives you choices. You know, if you want to be a little bit more fashion forward, etc. This one is for the avant-garde out there. This is a champagne and the lens is commando polarized. That sounds pretty tough. Whoa. Okay. You, yeah, I'd have to be pretty brave. Um, hmm. Probably not the, probably not the frame I would go for, but I know many of you out there are incredibly mid-century modern-esque, and this is the type of stuff that you would definitely gravitate to. Okay, certainly an interesting collection. Um, we always have to be authentic in these reviews. I mean, this is about showing you uh, the details of it, walking through, what does it look like, what does it feel like. Here's my conclusion on this. There is no doubt that these are high quality sunglasses, that they're very fashionable, they're very stylish, uh, they're well made, they feel great, they're super light, but they're super durable. The cases and the details, I, I love all the accessories that it comes with. I love the little nods, the hidden things, the breath back to 007. I love the little logo. I usually don't like that, but I love the fact that it's a celebration of the 60th anniversary. To me, I would wind up probably purchasing the Barton Pereira No Time to Die ones first. So if I had a choice, I would go to the ones that Bond would wear because it's a little bit more of a connection to James Bond than these homage pieces. Now, if you are a Roger Moore fan, a Sean Connery fan, you probably can't go wrong with these. But for me and for my money and for my choices, I just am saying I would gravitate to the no time to die sunglasses. And I do. I put prescriptions in them. I've invested in them. So clearly those are my choice. But I love the fact that any brand out there, Barton Pereira or otherwise, are taking risks and you're starting to get that, that flavor. It sounded like fava beans and Chianti, that flavor of celebrating the 60th anniversary. And I'm all for that. I'm ready in 2022 to celebrate Bond in a big way. All right. Just wanted to show you those. Hope that was helpful. And of course, this has been David Zaritsky for the Bond Experience, and we'll see you all real soon. Take care. Thanks for watching this episode. If you want to be up on the latest from the Bond Experience, just click on this subscribe and subscribe to our channel. You're gonna get all the latest and greatest information plus some exclusive content. And by the way, speaking of content, here's something especially for you just because we know you. Talk to you soon.